Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the channel. If you're new, be sure to subscribe. We are starting a new channel, me and my friend and I. This is going to be a magic channel based off Magic the Gathering, so be sure to subscribe if you're into Magic the Gathering and Commander, for the most part, is what we're going to be covering. Today's deck showcase is going to be on Mishra. Uh, Mishra, playing by Gix. Really cool deck that I built not too long ago, and I'm pretty happy where it is, so I'm going to go ahead and showcase it. I'll be doing other deck showcases in the future whenever I got this a bit more organized, but for now, this is what we're going to do with what I got. So let's go ahead and talk about it. It's a red-black deck. Um, very aggressive. Uh, I have it built around tutors, so that way I can melt into Phyrexia, or uh, Mishra Lost with Phyrexia. Um, to do so, you need to take the Dragon Engine and Misha, attack with both of them to meld, and it's really, really powerful. Really, really hard to do with all its ways to find Dragon Engine in your deck, so I put a lot of tutors in it. I have a lot of graveyard shenanigans, just a lot of things to make the deck more consistent. So let's go ahead and talk about it a little bit. I'll also be showcasing it on Argot deck at the end of this video, so that way you can see the whole deck layout and how much it can cost. Once again, depends on shipping, how many packages, where you're buying it from. Depends where you buy your stuff from. So, let's go ahead and talk about it. Uh, this deck is right here. 100 card commander deck. Uh, it's not organized, it's just shuffled, ready to play. So, alright, so let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to grab from the top of the deck and see what we got here. So, command beacon. What I'll probably do is show up cards that are important. Like right, maybe like right here, if I remember, to end the editing. Command Beacon is pretty important, in my opinion, in this deck. Um, and what it's going to do is you can tap it, sacrifice it, and then you can just pull your commander from your command zone to your hands. The reason why this is so important is for Mishra in particular, people like killing Mishra. They like him not to be a threat. He's a four cost, so every time you die, you have to pay the command tax, which is two extra, right? So after a few times, it can get quite pricey to keep in killing your commander. This will help you just to make it to where you can pull him to your hand and just make him back to his four cost. So maybe after he dies the first time, it's fine. But after he dies the second time, it costs eight, right? So this will just make it to where if you do have your command beacon in your hands, uh, you can play it, sack it, and then you can play him for his original cost. It just helps you not get overwhelmed with the mana cost of your commander. We have Swift Boots as well. Um, Gives a hex proof and haste. That's a one cost equipped, two cost to play. Really good to protect Mishra. Whenever you do meld into Mishra, lost to Phyrexia, it's very powerful. So it's best to try to give yourself hex proof or shroud as fast as possible. To make it harder for your opponents to kill outside of board wipes. We have the actual Phyrexian Dragon itself. Phyrex uh, Phyrexian Dragon Engine. You need to have this in your deck if you want to meld. Uh, sorry for that. I'll just make sure I'll split up the image on the thing. So the reason why this is so important is because whenever you do pull out your Phyrexian Dragon Engine and Mitra and you attack with both of them, that's when the meld will happen. It's a 2-2 with Dragon uh, Double Strike, which is fine if you do want to pull out early and try to get some early damage off. And you can unearth it. So you can bring it from your graveyard back to the battlefield. It gets haste. The downfall of unearth is that you will exile it, which is why you would want to do it when you have Mitra on the field ready to attack. So you can meld it and reset the stack. So if it dies again, it just goes to your graveyard. The whole point of unearthing it is to meld it right away. So protect your Phyrexian Dragon Engine as best you can. We have no Ash uh, Intervention. Uh, until the end of turn, target creature gets plus two, plus zero, and gains whenever this creature dies. Put it into exile from the battlefield, then return it to the owner's hands. Once again, you want to protect your, protect your Dragon Engine as best as possible. That way you're able to pull off the meld. More consistent way of doing that is protecting your stuff, even if it dies, to bring it back to your hands. Uh, that doesn't matter. I'll go over the mana base once we get into the actual arc deck. Uh, we have Knight's Whisper. You draw two cards, lose two health, or lose two life. Um, just draw power. It helps. It helps a lot. We have Bola's Citadel. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. Um, you may play the top card of your library. If you cast the spell this way, pay your life equal to its converted mana cost. Then pay the mana cost. And then you can sacrifice 10 non-land permanents. Each opponent loses 10 health. It's just 
you're trying to seek out your dragon engine as fast as possible to meld. That's what this deck I built is based around melding. Not really so much Mitra himself um, with the tokens and all that. There's definitely going to be some of that in here, but it's more so consistency in the meld. We have Expedite. Target right, creature gains haste, and you draw a card. A haste and fell on the turn. It's a one cost instant. Once again, you have to swing with both Mishra and Dragon Engine to no. meld. Uh, we do have Trinitize. It's just there to be here, honestly. It's just there to do damage most times. Or if the opponents have a lot of draw power and good hand size, uh, you can punish them. So it's a five cost. Target player discards his hand, or his and or her hands, unless he pays or they pay seven life. And against Mishra, seven life is a lot because you can just get easy 12 damage off for free if they're able to not block Mitra himself. That's the swamp. It's a matter. Uh, okay, here we go. We have Krinko, the Ten Street Kingpin. Whenever uh, Krinko, Ten Street Kingpin attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on it, and then create that many of uh, create a number of one plus one goblin creatures equal to his power. So token generation to help out Gix and also have great blockers. Really, really good just to ramp up blockers and of course give you that life you needed if you want to play Gix side for a little while before melting to get yourself set up for it. More blockers, better. Swamp. We have Blood Lester uh, and Sitter. Uh, tap him. Creature gains haste, fill under turn. Once again, red, black, really aggressive. You want to make your decks as aggressive as possible. The faster the game is over, the better it is for you because even though this game has a great late game, it's really, really, really strong in the early to mid game where you have minimizing chances to cast stuff because Mishra is quite easy to cast out. He's only four cost. The Dragon Engine is only three cost. It's really efficient. Just, just go full throttle to start knocking people out. Mountain, Swamp, uh, Unmarked Grave, two cost sorcery. Search your library for a non-legendary card. Put that card into your graveyard and then shuffle. If you're in a desperate situation, it's a tutor for your Dragon Engine because you can unearth it, worst case scenario. So if you're in a situation where you're like, you need to meld and you don't have any other options to find him, just them to your graveyard and get him back. It's just a it's just a fast tutor to your graveyard. This deck has a bunch of tutors in it, so you're going to see a lot of that. I have False Floor in here. They're really, really good. And the reason why I run False Floor personally is because, um, well, the, my playgroup... One of my playgroup members likes playing Avacyn, which gives indestructible to all of your, like, indestructible to her plus all other creatures, right? And she has Vigilance, so she can't tap, so this will punish that, because it's going to exile her, not destroy exile her. So you can get rid of indestructible angels, for example, that's why I use it. As long as your creatures are tapped, they're good, but against Vigilance, it's really, really, really strong. and can punish those who use it. So what it's going to do is a four cost artifact. It enters the battlefield tapped. And then on your next turn, uh, pay two, exile, false four. All untapped creatures uh, or get exiled. Activate those only as a sorcery. So really, really strong board wipe that's controllable because whenever you spring with Mishra, it doesn't have vigilance. So you tap it and then you can activate false four and punish your opponents. Really, really good for punishing. We have... Bajuku Bog, I think that's kind of important. Um, just, there's a reason why this is here. And it's just because there's a second win condition in this deck outside of Mishra. We'll get to, we'll talk about it in a minute. Or whenever I get to it, it's it's a it's a, it's a thick deck. We, we, got, we got a little while to go. But we'll talk about it when we get to it. There's a reason why this is here. And that's because this deck also can mill your opponent's deck out pretty easily. And you can punish them with Bajuku Bog by exiling their graveyards. Just like I said, graveyard shenanigans, you can, you can punish it. Also, it taps for black, so... It just makes sense to have it in your in your deck. Blasphemous Act. I've been debating if I want to keep this in this deck or not. It's good. Um, it's a good board wipe. It's just it hurts everyone, including yourself. So it is a situational board wipe. Only have two of them in this deck because Blasphemous Act is just kind of free if you can get multiple tokens. And then of course false false floor is just easy punish those who you know don't swing at you and play very patient. So this spell costs eight, or costs one less to cast for each creature on the battlefield, and it does 13 damage to each creature. It's a nine cost, so the more creatures, the better. It's just a strong board wipe. 
if you get Mishra dead and then your graveyard and you want to punish someone, you can pop, you can pop Plasma in the sack and punish. It's a pretty popular card. Jeskai's will. Um, very, very strong. At uh, three cost, sorcery. Choose one if you control a commander as you uh, as you cast this. You may choose both. Remember, the keyword it says you may, so you, it's an option. As long as your commander's on the field. Add one red uh, mana for each card and target's opponent's hand. XL top three cards of your library, and you may play them this turn. Very good for aggression if you need to, especially if you are able to get extra turns off. Um, or just really, really strong spells in general. Just really strong. We have this and Doom. This and Doom is pretty good too. It's a one cost it's sorcery. Return target creature from your graveyard to your hand. So if you don't want to pop an earth because you don't feel like it's safe, you can just bring it back instead. Once again, unearth is just an optional. It costs more to just unearth it than it would to just distomb it back to your grave and then summon it. So it, it saves you some mana, it, mana if you need to. All right, so this is probably the most expensive card in the deck. So I understand if you guys don't want to chase this card right now, if you are on a budget, but Dockside Extortionist, one of the best cards in all magic. So he's a two cost creature goblin pirate. Um, whenever Dockside enters the battlefield, create X amount of treasure tokens, where X is the number of artifacts and enchantments your opponents control. You can sacrifice this for mana. It's really, really, really good. Good, good, good ramp. Especially if you pair it well with, like, Jeskai as well, and you just get, like, a crazy amount of cards on that turn. Very strong. It's like an $83 card, I think. Very pricey, but one of the best ramp cards in Commander because Soul Ring exists, Ar uh, Arcane Signet. There's so many enchantments and artifacts that people will use for ramp. You can punish them really hard at Dockside by giving yourself more mana. We have Morag, Furry of Alcum. He's a six cost, two red. I hope I said that right. He's there for landfall and extra turns. He's a six, six. Each creature you control gets plus one, zero for each time it has attacked this turn. So landfall, whenever a land enters the battlefield under control, if it's your main phase, there's an additional combat phase after this phase. At the beginning of your combat, untap all creatures you control. So your main phase two, play land, boom, extra turn. Or actually extra, extra combat phase really really good with mishra because you can untap it and just keep pressing all the annoying things especially if you have it melted it's just so toxic one of the better cards we have Calderon's gift five cost uh one black so four cost and um, then one black <sighs> if at least one black mana was spent to use this card or cast to the spell uh you may put that four cards of your library into your graveyard you may choose creature card in your graveyard if you do return to battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. Once again, graveyard shenanigans. We have a mountain. Cryptech. It's a three cost with one black. It's a four total artifact creature. Pay one black plus one, tap it, and then another target artifact creature you control. When this creature dies, return to the battlefield, tap it under control protection on your stuff like mitra is an artifact mitra and the the melded version is an artifact creature so there are ways to protect them and make them you know come back even if they're not melded as long as you can bring them back that's all really matters because you get to remeld into it and it still applies the effects when you attack when you melt right it's really strong so swamp here's our first uh well not really our first but um, our first normal tutor, Diabolical Tutor. It's a four cost. You toss two black, two normal. Search your library for a card and put that card into your hand. Then shuffle your library. Easy way to seek out Dragon Engine if you don't have it in your hand. That's one of many tutors. One of many. Into. Here's another one. Search your library for a card to put that card into your graveyard and shuffle. We have an unearth on Dragon Engine, so it doesn't really hurt us to unearth it if we need to. It's a swamp. Another very, very good political politician, or oh, Jesus, politician, a political tutor. If you play with a big play group, this could be very beneficial to you uh, for just making it easier on yourself. So it's a two cost um, tutor called Wish Claw, Wish Claw Talisman. So what, the way this works is it comes to the battlefield, it gets three wish counters on it. 
You can tap one mana and then search for anything in your graveyard or anything in your deck and put it into your hands. Now the reason why this is so good is because if you're playing in a multiplayer setting, you can bargain for someone or to someone else be like, yo, protect me and I'll give you an access to a tutor to send it back my way. And if you have people that like playing with like um, ways to put more counters on this or re uh, proliferate it, you can get this to be pretty much infinite. It's, it's pretty fun. I would recommend running it. That way you just have ways to be like, yo, if you let me play this and get this out and set myself up, I will give you a free tutor to use in someone else. It's just really good for politician play. Or political play, jeez. Uh, one cost artifact, uh, Skull Clamp. Uh, equip creature gets plus one, plus one. Whenever a equip creature dies, draw two cards. Equip cost one, just draw power. A little bit of extra power, well, plus one, minus one. Um, my bad. Uh, and then draw power. We have recover, or re, two cost with uh, what black. Return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand, draw a card. More draw power, more graveyard shenanigans. Always, always good. Mountain. Here's our next extra turn. Tharalak, Theory of Avernus. Legendary creature, Barbarian. Um, she's in the deck because extra turns are really strong. So whenever you attack, if it's your first combat phase of the turn, untap all creatures. They pay, they gain first strike until in turn after this phase, there's an additional combat phase. Just extra combat phases, and you get first strike as well. Just super, super strong, super strong aggression. Swamp, <clears throat> swamp. Uh, more, more lands. Here we go. So this is going to bear with the Bajuku Bog combo. Uh, earlier, you saw Bajuku Bog. Um, this is called Peer into the Abyss. It's a four normal cost, three black. Quite pricey for a sorcery. Um, Really, really cool though if you pair it with something else. Target player draws cards equal to half the number of cards of their library and loses half their life. Round up each time. So you're not going to really, you know, reactivate this, reactivate it. He's going to use it for the one time to take a lot of their health and give them a massive hand. Um, this is going to be really good if you can force discard them. Um, there is a $200 card for like um, Wheel of Fortune if you can get it into your deck. Just force them to discard the whole hand, then it's pretty fun. But I use this mainly to mill them out and do lots and lots and lots of damage as a finisher. It's a really good finisher if they're already like at 20 or so health and there's like still a bunch of cards left, you can do a lot of damage that way because they're losing half their health. Sure, they get a really big hand, but if you have ways to control that, you can punish it as well. And there's another combo card in here that make them take damage each time they draw a card, so really, really good. Ornithopter, um, zero cost artifact creature, just a blocker. I have Mishra playing by Gix, so if I don't have him fused or I don't have him um, melted, it still does one damage guaranteed, and I gain one life. So I can swing with it, block with it, zero cost creature, why not? It has benefits in this deck. <clears throat> not needed. So we have Ryan Clock, two cost artifacts. Put a charge counter on Grand Clock, and then the effect is target player puts the top X cards of his or her library on, into the his or her graveyard where X is the number of counters on clock. So you can build this up, try to protect it, and mill someone out. Or mill yourself. It really is situational. Mind Stones is really, really good. Uh, artifacts for ramp. You tap it for one. Uh, normal in the, or just you know tap it sack it for one and then draw a card pretty similar to I think it's just really just like a better command not uh, command sphere. it's just it gives you a normal instead of colored and what costs one less we have goblin engineer really really good the reason why this is so good is because the dragon engine is an artifact so you can you throw them into your graveyard so when goblin engineer enters the battlefield you can may search your library for an artifact card put that card into your uh, graveyard and shuffle your library and then the next turn on your follow-up turn you pay one red and then sacrifice him to return that artifact with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to your battlefield mountain uh faithless looting one cost sorcery has flashback draw two cards then discard two cards flashback pay three uh, you may cast this card from your graveyard for its flashback cost the next outlet, so draw power. 
Rise again. It's a 5 cost. Return target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. It's pretty much an unearth without the haste effect and then without the consequences of having to exile it if you're unable to melt it, right? Swamp. Gix Young Noth Praetor. Uh, it's a 3 cost, 2 black, 1 normal. Whenever you, whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents, its controller may pay one life. If they do, they draw a card, so it's draw power. You can also pay um, seven, discard X cards, exile the top X cards of your library or target's opponent's library. You may play lands and cast spells from among them. Exile this way without paying their mana cost. Just annoying draw power and control. Professional Facebreaker. Really, really cool card. Three cost, one red, two normal. Or colorless, I should say. Has menace. When whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage, create a treasure token. Sacrifice treasure or uh, sacrifice treasure. Um uh, exile top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. Good if you have a way to melt. Well, this is good in jumping. Um especially if it's a sorcery. And not a creature. You could definitely do that to the dragon engine because you have unearth, or if you have like many graves or whatever ways to give your creatures haste, very very helpful too. Because then you just get you just get more pressure. Brexian reclamation is next up. The one cost enchantments. Pay two, pay two life. Return target creature from your graveyard to your hands. More graveyard shenanigans. It's a mountain. This is another tutor, Demonic Tutor, quite pricey. I think it's like $30 or $40. Demonic Tutor is the expensive one because it costs the least amount of mana to use. Search your library for a card, put that card into your hand, then shuffle. Ways to search out the Dragon Engine. Solar Stone, more ramp. Uh, add one mana, any color that a land can, uh, an opponent can produce. So. Sure, we only have two colors in our deck, but Mitra still costs two extra, so you can just tap it for whatever color and it still counts, right? Ideally, you want red or black, but whatever works. Uh, more lands. Okay. Nahab, the Eternal. Five cost, two red, three normal. Uh, has clicked three. Whenever a creature becomes blocked, or whenever this creature becomes blocked, the defending player loses three life. At the beginning of your post-combat main phase, add one red for one life. Your opponents have lost this turn. It's a 4-6. More ramp, more punishment for blocking. Just more just more ways to cast things because you have more mana to play. That's a mountain. Renitate Tactics is a one cost. A red uh, sorcery. Target creature can't block this turn. Draw a card. Mainly there for the draw pressure. Cheap. Affordable doesn't really hurt you. Draw is always good. Pay one for a draw. I'll take it. Also, um, if it, there's only one creature on their opponent's side or you're scared of them blocking with a death touch, you can prevent that, right? Here's the other combo card for the metal combo. It's called Underworld Dreams. It costs three black. Whenever an opponent draws a card, it does well and damage to that player. So you would play uh, you would play this. You would play Pier to Abyss, and then you would... Uh, mill them at their hand into their hand they'll take a lot of damage because one they're taking half their life already uh because they're drawing half their deck pretty much and then it would take additional damage because of the draw power and then you would if you're able to get those cards into their graveyard at least most of them that they pulled out they don't have max hand size you just bujuku bog them and just exile all their cards it's really really fun oh this is really important this line is special i'm gonna show this one because it was actually important Rogue's Passage. You tap the four, um, and you can make your creature unblockable. So like Mishra does nine damage, unblockable nine, and then you can do three damage to them off the effects out of one of the three. So really, really good. And then you can just do whatever. Go for a Power Stone. Um, just make them discard cards. Do whatever other effect you want to. But free 12 damage with Mishra because you can hit them. Activate the ability to do three damage is just so strong. We have... Earl Brask, the hidden. Five cost, two red, and then three colorless. Creatures you control have haste. Creatures your opponents control come in tapped. So whenever they play a creature, if this is on the field already, they have to play their creature tapped, so obviously. So good. Very good for pressure and being annoying. 
Gore, uh, Gorgling Vulture. Uh, three costs, flying, whenever it enters the battlefield. Put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard, and then gain one life for each creature card. Put your like uh, graveyard this way. I don't play it often. I don't think I've played it once yet. I've had it in my hand. I've just never really played it. It's very situational. It depends on your setup. If you don't have your engine, or you, if you don't have your in dragon engine on your in your hand early, you may want to play just to see if you can get lucky and mill it in. Commander Sphere, more ramp, cost three. Tap it for um, one, or tap for one of any color of your color of your commander's identity, color identity, and you can sack it, draw a card, small ramp. Flame one, life link, um, three cost, one black, two, polar list. Uh, it has flesh player, whenever flesh, uh, flame one, interest battlefield, mill three cards, just more milling if you need to, mill yourself. We do have Mishra Tamer of the Mac Flower, five cost, three normal, one red, one black. Permits you control have ward, and then each artifact card in your graveyard is unearthed. So it's really, really helpful if you want to bring back permanents from your graveyard with them having unearthed. Lots of pressure. Really, really cool. And having ward on top of that and all your stuff just makes it kind of nice. Land. Here's a, here's good. Here's the one that pairs with the well, both commanders, but really, really good before melding. It still works after melding, but it's really, really good for this. So it's a loyal apprentice, two cost, has haste. Uh, Lieutenant, um, at the beginning of your combat turn, you, if you control your commander, create a 1-1 one, one colorless softer artifact creature with flying, and that token has haste until end of turn. So tokens, life, every time you swing with your commander uh, with a uh, Gix, remember your opponents all take one. So if you mass swing with everything, every opponent's taking at least one damage per creature you're swinging with, and then you're healing, right? So it's just good for controlling everyone's life. Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. Three cost, one black, two normal, or two colorless. Vampire Cleric, Legendary Creature. Um, whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. It has a uh, other thing where you tap three into black. Creatures you control gain life blink until end of turn. Good for punishment. Here, here's a really good one. Uncivil Unrest. Really under the radar card. Uh, pay five. And one red and four of any color. Non-token creatures you control have riot. They enter the battlefield with your choice of either one plus one counters or haste. Ideally, you want the one plus one counters. Though you can activate the other ability. Um, if a creature you control with a one plus one counter on it would deal damage, to a permanent or player, it deals double damage instead. So you hit them for 12, you're doing double do that. You're gonna be doing double damage with your commander because you're hitting the three in on target. So that's three damage from the, the Phyrexian, like the melded Phyrexian ability. So it's six, and you're gonna be hitting with nine if you're able to rogues passage them and just hit from the three. So you're gonna be able to double that damage. So this this card is really gross for ending games quickly. And on top of that, it's commander damage if you play with commander damage. We don't here, but if you do, that's a lot of commander damage. Combined with Coven, uh, one black, two um, colorless. It has menace. Whenever you gain life, you may pay one black if you do return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Graveyard shenanigans. It's a creature, three, three. That is a land. Sink, or Stinkweed Imp, just a blocker, mainly. Flying whenever a Stinkweed Imp deals combat damage to a creature. It, it, it technically just has that touch. This is like old. And also stretch five. If you were to draw a card instead, you may put exactly five cards on the top of your library into your graveyard. If you do, return this card from your graveyard to your hand, otherwise draw a card. Utility. Here we go, Master's Mind. Acquisition. It's a four cost tutor. This is really, really cool because I have another card in this deck that I use the second effect for. Uh, as long as you own the card, you can do it. Or own a sideboard, you can do it. Or just the card in general on you. So choose one. Search your library for a card, then shuffle that, uh, and then put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. Basic tutor. What makes this so special is that if you already set up, you can have, and you have a sideboard, or if it's like other cards that are of color that you can play. You can uh, choose a game you own outside of the game, or choose a card that you own outside of the game, 
put it into your hands. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you my, my sideboard first. Not like a matter. It is actually this. Now you can pick whatever you want, whatever you have come up with your own strategy. But mine's Bodor Doom Scourge. Pretty much forces my opponents to have to attack, but they don't attack me. They have to attack each other, right? So when he enters the battlefield, until your next turn, creatures you, your opponent's control attack each combat if able, and attack a player other than you if able. And then the other effect is whenever an attacking creature dies, each opponent loses one life, and you gain one life. So it goads them into killing each other. That way you can sit, chill, and laugh as they kill each other with your uh, with your setup. And it's a situational, for sure, situational for sure. There's probably other things you can go for if you have other cards because of how it works as a tutor, but that's just one I enjoy personally playing because it's funny seeing your friends kill each other. That is a land, land. Um, the Cruelty of Gix, five cost, two black, three colorless. Uh, okay, so. It is a enchantment saga. Target opponents reveal their hand. You choose a creature or planeswalker card from it, and that player discards that card. Uh, the second one is search your library and put that card into your hand, then shuffle. So it's a tutor, and then you lose three life. And then put target creature card from a graveyard onto your battlefield under your control. So it's a tutor, graveyard shenanigans, and a discard. It's pretty pretty annoying uh, saga to deal with. We have a card called shenanigans. This is. Honestly, I only put it in, in this deck because it's red and it's hilarious. It's just a stupid card. It's not even that good of a card, it's just a stupid card. And I enjoy fun. Uh, two costs, one red, one colorless. Destroy target artifact. Boom. Just pick an artifact, destroy it. It has dredge one. If you were to draw a card, instead you may put exactly one card from your the top of your library into your graveyard. If you do, return this card from your graveyard to your hand, otherwise draw a card. Turn one soul ring. Oh, Lamau, kill it. I don't know. If there's a strong artifact in the field and you don't want to deal with it, it's literally there to destroy an artifact. Red hates artifacts, so I just put it in there because it's called Shenanigans. Soul Ring. Every deck has one, or should have one. Uh, Elbros, God of Dead. It's an indestructible enchantment creature. As long as your devotion to black is less than five, isn't a creature. So you need to have five creatures or not five you need to have five of these little black devotion things on either creatures or enchantments or artifacts in total on your field up in this corner for this to be a creature it is indestructible and then your opponents can't gain life and then you can sack uh pay two and then draw a card and also two health so it's just there to prevent healing really really good really good into life uh, decks in general it's shutting off all healing Hostile Negotiations, it's a pretty interesting card. It has a lot of risk, a lot of reward. You have to be good at it with a poker face. So it's one black, three uh, colorless. It's an instant. Exile the top three cards of your library in a face down pile. Then exile the top three cards of another uh, of your library in another face down pile. Look at each of these piles. Then turn a pile of your choice face up and your opponents will choose one of those piles, put one into your hand, and put one into your graveyard, and then you lose three health. Really, really good if you're able to play the pile of your choice. In most situations, it really isn't that impactful, because most of the stuff you're looking for has a way to return, like Unearth. The Dragon Engine has Unearth, so it's not that bad that they pick your Dragon Engine pile into your graveyard, because you just Unearth it, right? But it is helpful to get more cards in your hand and then since we have graveyard shenanigans well this card is set up set us up with more graveyard stuff as long as it don't exile it of course like your graveyard goblin motivator you can tap it target creature gets haste until it turns one one just a haste activator command tower whoop dee well it could awakening um Put any number of cards from your hand onto the bottom of your library, then draw that many cards plus one. It's This is like if you are in a situation to where like you're down bad to draw. You can just pass your turn, get a big hand, cycle your hand out if you need. You can also just like play it as a land if you don't need it. It's still technically a land, so hey man, depends on the situation. Uh, Sarkhan's Triumph. 
It's a switch your library for a dragon card, reveal it, put it into your hands, and then shuffle your library. It's a tutor for the dragon engine because it's a dragon card, so it's another tutor. Once again, this deck is designed to get yourself to meld pretty efficiently and effectively every game you play because there's enough tutors in here where you should get the dragon engine out pretty fast. It, it's it's pretty effective. Mogus, God of Slaughter. This is a fun card that I like. I'm a big fan of the gods. I have a god deck on the side that's bridge. I might do a video on it eventually, but legendary enchantment god. Indestructible. One black, one red, two colorless. As long as your devotion to black and red is less than seven, it isn't a creature. Um, at the beginning of each of opponents keep you to do two damage to them. They sacrifice a creature. So if you do this, um, it's it's good board control and or free damage. And whenever he becomes a creature, he's a 7-5 with indestructible, so he can hit quite hard. Striconic Resonator, really, really good because Mishra is an active ability if you fuse into him. The uh, Lost Depression, so you can just do his whole, like, just do it again. You can just be like, okay, boom, I'm going to attack, activate his ability, tap for two, did three more options, so you get six options. You can just reset the options, so you can do six damage instead of three. You can destroy, or you can discard four cards instead of two. You can make your uh, opponents lose, or one and one, or get negative one, negative ones. Like it's it's just it's just for fun, really strong fun. Hell, um, here's a pretty cool card: four cost legendary artifact, Helm of the Host. Uh, at the beginning of your combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of equipped creature, except the token isn't legendary. And uh, the token gains haste. Imagine having two, um, having two lost Phyrexian or two melded um, commanders that both <laughs> have access to Striconic Resonator. Uh, yeah, that's a lot. It's a lot of damage. Really cool. You know, you can clone other things too. There's a lot of things you can clone in this deck. That's a mountain. Planning Greaves. I figured we get to them. Everyone needs a pair of Lightning Greaves. Uh, Haste and Shroud. Technically, it's pretty good. Zero cost to equip it. Two cost. Protect your commander. Protect your board. All that good stuff. Arcane Signet. More ramp. Ring of Valkas. Pretty good. Um, equip creature has haste. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a 1 plus 1 counter on equip creature if it's red. Um, this is good. But the reason this is in here is more so to give the creature haste and then build them up over time. It's not going to be good for the melded version of the Gix because it is technically not colored. It's a colorless. Because when you meld, there's no devotion on the top right, making it not black or red. So it's kind of weird. Um, I don't think you'd want to try to do that. You just give it something else for the 1 plus 1 every turn to make it bigger. He has ghost form is pretty cool. It's a one uh, cost enchantment aura, enchanted creature or planeswalkers you control, or enchanted creature or planeswalker you control. Whenever or when enchanted permanent dies or is put into exile, return that card to the battlefield under your control. More ways to protect yourself. Dolmen gates. <sighs> Two cars artifact prevent all damage dealt. Or prevent all common damage that wouldn't be dealt to attacking creatures you control. It's good for not dying if you're swinging at things and you're playing aggressive. Not good defensively, but good for offensive. Uh, Crypto Thrall, this is very important. I think anyone that runs a Mishra deck should have this card in their deck. It's a four cost colorless creature, artifact creature. It has Protector. Other artifact creatures you control have Hexproof. Hex proof on all Mishra is a is an artifact creature. The Belded so it is an artifact creature. Uh you would just give this thing your lightning greaves or your or, or your or your whatever swift boots and give this hex proof so that way it can protect the rest of your stuff and give everything hex proof so it's really really good for protecting your stuff. We have a timepiece, uh two cost artifact. Put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. You can exile this, shuffle any number of target cards from your graveyard into your library. Uh, situational, if you accidentally mill something, you don't want to mill. 
I guess. That's a swamp, and this is a mountain. So that is all 100, no, all 99 cards plus the commander, which is 100, and then one extra in the sideboard if you choose to use it. Um, of course, we have Mishra here as the main commander because this is a Mishra deck. Um, so yeah, Mishra is sick. Um, let me go ahead and pull up the dragon engine real fast. This should be somewhere in here. I think it was somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Boom. Okay. So, this is a melded card, which means to meld, you have to have... This is, this will be on the back of it. There's no Magic the Gathering back of the card. For those who are curious how you get the actual, like, Phyrexian melded version, that's just the back of your card. I had the same question when I first started. She was like, how do you get the melded version? It's literally in the back of both of them, so you have to sleeve the... You need to sleeve this. That way you can actually play it. So, there you guys go. That's the Mishra deck showcase, I guess. It is quite good. There are ways to improve it, of course, but the ways you would improve it are quite expensive. I kind of already told you, like, Wheel of Fortune is pretty good. Um, quite expensive card, though. Um, more tutors, if you can find any, are really helpful. Token play, if you want to play with just the Mishra itself instead of the melted version. It is dependent on what you're trying to do. If you're just trying to play with Mitra and not meld, I do I think the deck will be overall more cheaper because you won't need to go for all those expensive tutors. Hey yo, that's not what I wanted. Um, you just play token based stuff and do lots of damage. I myself I prefer playing for the meld because I think it's more fun. I think melding is a lot more fun and it becomes a lot more aggressive. So that's why I play with Mitra instead, or the uh, I try to meld instead. So that's that's why I have that. So before we do end the video, let's go ahead and switch over to uh, this. All right, guys. So this is the going to be the deck. Um, here's what the base cost is, or the estimate cost is. It depends where you're buying it from. Whenever you go buy cards, you can pick either Card Kingdom if you think they'll have all the cards in. I personally like TCG Player the most. It could be more expensive because once again, you can have multiple packages. Um, but it is quite pricey. It says 366. It's more realistic. Maybe be like 400 and something or close to 400 because of the Depending on many packages and if you want to make the the pilvery four days or less It just depends. It's between 360 and I'll say between 370 380 to like 400 plus um, If you buy this deck as is. So here's how the land base is. We have Bloodfell Caves, Bajuka Bog, Cinder Bearing Barons, you already saw Command Beacon, Command Tower, uh, Dragon's Call Summits, mo 10 Mountains, 1 uh, Rados uh, thing, uh, land, Rocky Tar Pit for search lands, Rogue's Passage, Mothering Marsh, Sulphurous Mire, 10 more swamps, and of course, Temple of Malice. This is my, that's my land layout, 32 with total, plus we have 5. Ramp plus Dockside, so Ramp really isn't that big of an issue, especially if you have Dockside in the deck, it should be no problem. Dockside alone is just so good. Um, it is quite an expensive card. It's going for $73, yeah. 84 to 73, 73 to 84, he's a very expensive card. If you don't want to play with Dockside, that's fine. It'll definitely help out making this deck cheaper. Just throw something else in there that you can afford, that can give you more Ramp. Like, it really demands. I just realized this isn't one for one for my deck because there's no command tower or no command sphere in this deck. But it's pretty close to it. I think there's only a few different changes, if anything. Uh, I don't, I'm not even sure. This should be... Oh, it's because I took out flash through for a command sphere. So let's fix that. That is the difference. Commanders... Or it's command sphere. I just realized I changed that literally not too long ago. And command sphere. So, yeah, 366 on um, the estimate deck cost. Uh, there it is. It's fixed now. Now it's updated. Now everything's in there that should be. I forgot. I took out Glass Through. It's not really worth it. But you can put Glass Through in instead of Dockside, I guess, or just find another creature if you can't or don't want to buy Dockside because of the price of Dockside. Once again, this is a kind of pricey deck. You do have, you know, a few cards that are above a few dollars. Um, the Modic Tutor is one of them, being $37. You have Dockside, which is like 
73 to $80. Um, it, it can be pretty pricey. Um, most of it isn't too bad, though. It's probably my... There, here's another one. Gix is uh, another $32, it looks like. Um, $16 for... Yeah, it, it's going to be pretty pricey, but it is a really fun competitive deck, I think. So, depends on your budget. If you're able to budget out nicely, uh, it's really nice. It, it is a very nice deck, uh, for the most part. I mean, it's cheap as possible while making it as competitive as possible. You can definitely make it better if you're able to drop more money on it. Uh, once again, Wheel of Fortune, really good for cycling your hand. It's just super, super expensive. Uh... Super, super expensive. Expensive, geez, words. Um, oops, yeah, that's a $300 card now. Jeez, like this alone just oh, it's so expensive. All players discard their hands and draw seven new cards. Very helpful, but very, 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 very expensive. But yeah, there you guys go. That is the Mishra Dragon Engine deck that I run. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll have this linked in the description below. That way, if you do want to buy the deck and try it out for yourself, and have fun building. You guys can do that. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. It does help the channel out. Pass the channel around if you did enjoy this video. And I'll talk to you later. Peace.